Boom, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. For the first time ever, California's Maple Street Correctional Center opened its doors to a television crew. Stop screaming at me. I'm in jail. Giving incredible access to a uniquely female space. Oh, my God, it's so beautiful. That is home to some of America's most dangerous women. I was smashing her face up against the bars. Charged with everything from drug trafficking to armed robbery, gang violence, <laughs> and even murder. I had stabbed him 50 times. Our cameras captured every shocking and sometimes surprising moment <laughs> of life behind bars. But jail life can be explosive. And every day can be a battle to stay safe. When good girls go bad... It's like the fucking soap opera. ..anything can happen. I believe that she's, she's... She made the same mistake last week with ketchup, so I think she thinks she's only ordering, like, 12 packets total. But she's ordering 12 strips, so she ends up with, like, a lot of mayo. You need to. Not one more minute. Not I know. Dude, I did it again. I knew. I knew that that was going to happen. Okay. So I would never am going to order 120 hot sauce, ketchup, and mayonnaise. Because I spent like forty dollars on condiments. I'm going to have them every day until I get out here. I, considering I don't have a lot of money on my books, it, it, it's. But you know, at least it, at least it lasts a long time. So. <laughs> Trying to keep things clean around here. 45-year-old <laughs> <laughs> Linda has been in Bay's intake area for almost 10 days. My roommate left this morning. I put the blanket here so I get an extra lunch. I'm hungry. We do the damn thing in jail. We're all convicts. I'm a thief. I'm a shoplifter, so I be doing little shit like this. This is not Linda's first time in jail. So I'm here because I got caught for shoplifting once again. I've been busted, I can't even count how many times, probably about five times at this point, six times. She's not a violent criminal, you know? She's not planning bank jobs. She's not, that's not her MO. She's, she's a low-level petty thief that, you know, probably steals from shops. Hey, you know, being a criminal isn't the best thing, but it's not the worst thing either. People say, oh, Elle, you got busted again. Yeah, I got busted again, but the other 775 times that I didn't get busted and came out of the store with a hundred to two thousand dollars worth of merchandise, what does that look like? When you're pulling in that kind of revenue, two weeks in jail is not that fucking bad. <laughs> Food is so important that I constantly dream about it. I constantly think about it. I have already made a list of where I am going to probably not pay for any of this um, when I get out. Linda's written a list of food she plans to shoplift when she gets out. Yellow cake, chocolate frosting, eggs, vegetable oil. What's up, man? Hey, what's up? A movie star right there. Two packages of bone and pork chops, two jars of barbecue sauce, mayonnaise, Dill relish, spicy ketchup, pickles, 10 almond butter chocolate bars, like the Reese's, the nice ones, and two pizzas. Oh, wait, and then we've got frozen biscuits, waffles, syrup, garlic, steak marinade, and A1 sauce. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Like many women in jail, Linda is a drug addict. I've been smoking crack off and on for about 23 years. 22 years. Shoplifting and drug taking often go hand in hand. Uh, why do I shoplift, number one? Because um, I'm pretty good at it. Um, it's easy, it's no overhead, it's my own business. You know, I do drugs, so I have to supplement my habit and provide for myself. I got an attorney visit. Linda has court tomorrow, so she's going to meet with her attorney. She's hoping, as she only has a misdemeanor charge, she will be released. Yeah, I'm a very well-prepared individual, so... I don't like surprises, but I need to know a ballpark of what I'm looking at. If I get out tomorrow, I'll be so motherfucking happy. Oh, my God, I need it. I, I just, I need to get out of this locked up space. All right, just the light will turn on in a second. I gotta get these turned on. Mm. 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 
buddy. Here, send him in. Austin, or... In the medium security transitional housing unit, known as THU, 36 year old Naila is taking part in the TOWS program. We basically take dogs who have been um, thrown away or given up and we train them to be adoptable. The women have now been looking after their dogs for almost a week. The first night we had the dogs, they was pissing and shitting everywhere. And uh, we had to get up at like 5.30 in the morning. Naila wasn't exactly thrilled to have a dog. I don't really know that much about dogs. Like, I'm, I'm barely not scared of them. If anyone finds out, they're like, shh, don't say that. They're like, they'll roll you up if you're afraid of dogs, you know what I mean? Naila's dog is called Mocha, and she's developed an annoying habit. My dog likes to hump on other dogs. <laughs> she's like humps on everything. She humps on all the dogs. She humps the chairs, and she can't help it. Like, she, will, she doesn't know when to stop. And we're like, we got to get her fixed. <laughs> Hello. Hi, George. Once a week, trainer George comes to help the women train their dogs, ready for their prospective adopters. Yeah. Last week we did, uh, they all know their names pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even yeah. Cinnamon. For whom cinnamon. His name. Oh, nice, that's awesome. The idea is responsibility and learning how to care for something. A lot of the women here are mothers. Do you guys remember the marker word, what that is? You guys... So that's kind of like getting people who maybe never had jobs or been in the street or been hustling all their lives. It kind of gets gives them an idea of what working class people do by training the dogs. And so I would just move slower. Move yeah, yeah. Nice. good doggy. And yeah. don't forget the yes. I mean, yes. You, you yes. gave her a word. Everything yes. is perfect. So next week I'm going to come over to this side first, I think, because I can actually stay a little longer. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. See you yeah. See you next week. See you next week. Naila has been in jail for two months after being moved from another facility. This is the longest I've ever been in jail. It's the longest I've ever been away from my son. Right. You always want everybody else okay. She hasn't always okay. been a criminal. I became homeless like three years ago. Me and my son lost our apartment. And I kind of just lost it like after that. Like I started like getting high every day and drinking every day, smoking every day. Naila was studying at college before her life went off the rails. I was studying biotechnology at City College and I just couldn't. I got overwhelmed. It just got too hard. And I started like doing a line like just to stay up to do my homework after putting my son down and doing everything, you know, the work just got harder. So grab your sporks too, ladies. Due to the stress, Naila's drug use became more frequent. It got to the point before I came to jail where I was needing it to get through my day. Okay, ladies, line up for dinner, please. Coming to THU is giving Naila the chance to get her life back on track. However, she got off to a rocky start. When I first came to THU, I got rolled up in 12 hours. I got into a verbal altercation with another girl, and they said, we will not tolerate that here. You got to go. It did not go to physical, but it was a verbal altercation, and that is a big no-no at THU. Fortunately, Officer Vieira decided to give Naila a second chance. Sorry, Ooh, that air feel trying good. to be strategic about my shit. Yeah. Um, she's doing much better since she came back the second time around. I told, I told my ex I was 200 pounds. He was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you got to work out your mind, your body, yeah. and your spirit. I'm like, shut oh, the fuck up. <laughs> Um, she was told that if uh, she did anything to jeopardize being in the program, then she would be removed again permanently. <laughs> Hell of funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> this morning, Linda went to court and was hoping to be released. I'm getting up. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna go get some food, get something to drink, go see the girl I like. Yep, time to get home. Time to get back. Time to have a good meal. What's the name of the show? Have a good barbecue. 
happy. I'm gonna eat so much food. I'm gonna have so many cocktails. I'm gonna hang out. I'm gonna hug my friends. I'm gonna party. I'm definitely gonna party. It's early morning in the jail, and Sergeant Clayton and his team are about to conduct a shakedown in THU. We're looking for any paraphernalia and any uh, narcotics that's possible in the pills that are laying around. Go that way first. Let's brief with them first. There's four tanks, right? Yes. Yeah. During a shakedown, officers search the cells for contraband, makeshift weapons like shivs, and drugs. Batista, can you go outside with the girls because they have to put the dogs away? Yeah. We'll get someone on tank two, tank three, see them in the windows. Mm -hmm. Heat them off. We're going to be going outside. Now. Now grab shoes. Can they get eyes on this spot here? Just to see what's in tank three. Ready? Is that an empty tank? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Nobody in the count. Anyone out there? All right. Nobody in the count. Morning. Okay. You ready up? I didn't wake you. No. Yeah, but right. Thank you. Go ahead and have a seat. It's already hot out here today. I know. Get you to work, huh? Four. 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 Thank you. Go ahead. Ladies, real quick. I know it's bright and early on a Sunday morning, and you guys and so now we're going to start stepping up a little bit and start doing the searches on the pods, all right? Due to several inmates breaking the rules, the officers want to check that none of the other inmates are hiding anything. We always get shaken down in jail. It's just kind of like one of those things to make sh help you remember that you are in jail. As Naila has already been rolled up once from THU, even a small infraction can mean that she is sent back to general population. Thank you. And look, should we get through this garbage can at all? Yeah. Just on the bottom, you lifted it out. Yeah, make sure there's nothing, in, no pruno or anything going in there. Here, who's on the right side? Me. Come here. The officers have spotted something in one of the inmates' rooms. <laughs> What is this? That's to write the letters on. That's what the girl said. Where'd you get it from? There's a whole bunch in the bottom. I organized So why is it in your room? Why isn't it where it, sl where it should be on the table? Um, I grabbed it to put the letter that I have all the way on top by the Bible, but I never pulled it so out. So keep this outside of your room, okay. please. Don't mess up. OK. OK? Although not okay. drugs or a dangerous weapon, Bianca has broken one of the THU's strict rules by having the clipboard in her room. What happened? That thing I had the little black thing to write on. Don't ask what happened. Mind your own fucking business. All right. Worry about yourself, OK? Who's in 3C? It's the last yeah. This time, the officers have found something in Naylor's bunk. Yes. What is this? Oh, the dog food. I'm sorry, what? It was the, do the dog food? Is that what you see? Why? Um, it was in my my pocket, and we were dog training. That's all. Okay. I wasn't trying to keep it for no other reason. Why does it look like that? Like what? It looks like dry chicken, like you've been holding chicken for two weeks. No, it's just from Friday. It's oh, one of those things. Sorry. Don't have these things in your room. For sure. I promise. Okay. I'll have it again. Thank you. OK. Naila is hoping that her explanation for the dog treats is enough to keep her out of trouble. When you get comfortable, that's when you get caught. That's when you get in trouble in other terms. In yeah. here. Yeah. If she wanted to, she could roll me up. So what do we find? What do we get? We found what? We got some weird dried chicken. I think we found this. That was about it. All right. And you talked to her about that. And then Patino, she left already. She found the uh, clipboard. All right. Anybody have anything to add? Any... Search. Thank you, guys. Okay. All right. Yep. Appreciate it. All right. No problem. <laughs> Luckily for Naila, having the dog treats wasn't serious enough for her to get rolled up. And we didn't find anything of significance, which uh, which is good. And then we don't have to have anybody kicked out of the of the program. Hi, sister. Hey, You're hella extra. Oh, well, don't touch my cat. All right, that's our scoreboard. <laughs> 
At 24, Shaylee is one of the youngest in Valley Pod. Not a lot of girls my age get to experience life. I've had a hard life with my weight. I've always been made fun of. Um, super confidence. I think I'm the sexiest person in this room right now. <laughs> but um, it took a lot for me to get there. Technically, because she cut them like 50 million times. Right. Yeah, 50 11, okay, to be exact. <laughs> Shaylee is charged with grand theft of an automobile. And it's not her first time in jail. I didn't know you was a cutter. I used to steal cars. That's how I made my money. It was just the easiest thing going. I mean, I would just do whatever. I would go to a store and steal jewelry or steal clothes or steal whatever. I would steal anything that wasn't bolted down, and even if it was bolted down, if I could get it up, I would. Ha! <laughs> okay, we got this. The majority of us that get off drugs drink coffee. <laughs> what that is, she doesn't do drugs either. I'm very hella scared. Maybe you're hella scared. Uh, I know, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Today, Shaylee is attending a class called Hope Inside, which aims to motivate the women and build their self-worth. So, I thought we would do a little, um, I guess you can call it a poem. I had kind of a rough upbringing. My mom also had an addiction problem, so I went into Child Protective Services at 16. I ended up getting kind of bullied a little bit, so me and one of the girls ended up running away. And that's when it all starts. If I can ask a few people to share their poem, would you want to go first? I'm someone who loves life. I'm someone who can't live without my family and friends. I'm someone who can recover. I got kidnapped by a pimp when I was 16. I have no idea how many men I slept with. I'm someone who will never go back to the old ways. I'm someone who has a beautiful attitude. Tried to get away numerous of times kept finding me. I got pregnant at 17, and I had my daughter two days after my 18th birthday, and he found me. The police got called, and that was the day they took my kid. Um, I started doing drugs that day. Uh, that's the first day I started crystal meth. Everything pretty much went downhill from there. I'm someone who will probably end up successful and happy. I am shady. OK. <laughs> In Bay, a new batch of inmates are arriving. And guess who's back? All right. Yeah, I'm back. So what? Linda was released just 16 days ago. Mm -hmm. um, I have to say that I feel like a complete fucking buffoon right now. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be eating horribly and life happened. Surviving. Just trying to make a living once again, and it didn't work out, so. So she's back. Um, she's embarrassed because she's kind of boomeranged back so quickly. I think she thought she was going to last longer than she did. Felt like a fucking idiot. Felt stupid. And then, of course, there's people, oh my god, you're back? Are you back? Hi! Oh, did you leave or are you just coming back from Valley? Nope. I'm coming back from Valley, yes, but I am actually coming back to jail. <laughs> so. So I came back, just, I got busted at another Walgreens again. I gotta find A, a new county, and B, a new store. <laughs> How many shops did I hit before I got caught? At least 30. <laughs> I move around, <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. All right, let's work on getting out of here. This time, Linda has a plan to get out of jail. How, how do I do this? Help me. She's going to try and bail out and has enlisted the help of fellow inmate, Stacia. What works for you? Well, because I used to work for a bill once. Oh, you did? Yeah. So what do you say? So, like, if you do independent contract or stuff, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you do, like... Oh, yeah, I used to have an Uber driver. <laughs> OK. I don't know which one to call. Hello? Yes, I'm in jail, and I need to bail out. Um, I like to self-bail. I don't have cash on me, but within a few hours of release, I can definitely have a couple hundred for you. Um, I know my, uh... hello? Hello, are you there? 
Hello? They hung up on me. Well, you don't want to say the first thing is, I don't have any cash or money, but I'll get money to you. But just say, like, um... This is fucked up. This one's fucked up. Let's go to this one. Come on. With no money to pay the bondsman, Linda is finding it hard to secure her bail. The bail guys will take a chance every once in a while, but she's probably just run out of options at this point, right? She's she's probably flat broke and doesn't have any, and none of her friends have money. I mean, she just got out. Yes, um, I like to I like to bail. Can you hear me? I like to bail out of jail. Ah, uh, it's ten thousand. A thousand can get me out. Oh, no, 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 that's too much. You know. A bail bondsman usually requires 10% of the bail amount, so Linda would need to find $1,000 to get out of jail. I don't know how to do this. All right, OK, thanks. Bye. Everybody wants to co-sign her. Having given oh, up on bailing out, Linda's thoughts turn to her family. I have an 18-year-old daughter. She's mad as shit at me. It's tough. Um, you know, me and my daughter, uh, our relationship has been on the rocks for about a year. Because I didn't call her on her birthday. I was going to, but I didn't. I was just got busy, and I just felt, I don't know. I, just, I really fucked this up, and I felt, I, I remember the day like it was yesterday. It was on a Sunday, and I had thought about her all day, and I wanted to call. But something just, something just stopped me from calling her, and then, when I talked to her a few days after her birthday, um, she was in tears. How could you forget about me? I said, baby, I didn't forget about you. And she was just so upset, and um, I haven't really spoke to her since. So I've tried, but she won't take my calls right now. After being back in jail for 10 days, Linda is graduating from intake to general population. She wants you to be staring at me. <laughs> She's been moved to Valley, where she'll be assigned to an eight-person cell. Putting new inmates into a tank can cause issues with the other women. There's going to be personality clashes and, and perceptions of, like, someone looked at me the wrong way. I'm right now kind of pissed off because I see somebody over here and I don't even know if I'm a can of paint, but I don't like it, you know what I'm saying? Anytime you put ladies in a tank setting and there's eight of them, there's going to be conflict. Hey, what's up? Hey, Linda. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm excellent. Good. Yeah, good. Yeah, I the inmates are clashing over which bunk Linda should take. I love a bottom bunk. If somebody doesn't want to be on the bottom, yeah. volunteer somebody to get up on top of me. Yeah. Actually, I volunteer myself. Top bunks are proving unpopular. Right, somebody's gonna be on top. There's another person coming in here, so. Ladies get very territorial. Yeah, okay, so then I'll move over here. Come on, Come on, Jenny. There was a lot of bickering in that particular room. Perfect. No, that's not because the girl need a bottom bunk. That's why they moving, Jenny. The other girl that's in coming in the room. Excuse me. Are you? Do you have a bottom bunk problem? Yeah. Exactly. That's what we're trying. One of the new arrivals has a medical condition that means she has to have a bottom bunk. You know, this is jail. This isn't. This isn't Four Seasons Hotel. Hey, hey. So things aren't going to be comfortable at all times. Officer Patanzo tries to calm the situation. Unfortunately, we just got a lot of housing, so we got a you know new personalities. Let's learn to deal with each other, okay? Oh, wait. Thank you. Okay, what part of be quiet? Oh, sorry. Just make your bed. I'm trying to get these other people's house, and I can't house them because I keep hearing noise over here. So please be courteous. The tension in the tank is proving too much for one of the new arrivals. The inmate has told Officer Batanzo that she's struggling in the eight-person tank. Um, because she said she was going to hurt herself, I placed her hands in handcuffs just for her safety. Okay, keep your 
Hand by your side, right? Yeah. Yeah? Hand by your side. Hand by your side. How are you? When an inmate says they are going to harm themselves, they are placed in a safety cell so they can be monitored by the jail's mental health team. Same time, okay? All right. Yeah, just a little while, okay? So she's in house every day, and um, I had all bottom bunk volunteers, so there was some bickering, and the room was packed, and a personality conflict, and then um, got everybody settled, and then she said she needed to talk to me. She came out and she said, I want to, I, I, I can't do a group setting, and I, I'm going to hurt myself. Okay. And at that point, I. Okay. Yeah. I, oh, you know where I was going to I called that one. I called that one. Back in the tank, the incident has meant that the previous tension has been forgotten. Everyone okay in here, though? You guys good? Okay. We have mental health talking to her now, and she's in... Um, a safe place where we can keep a very close eye on her until she feels better. So. Hi, ladies. Hi. Away from the drama, Shaley is due in court and is hoping to find out how long she'll have to stay in jail. So this is either where you go home or you come in. I'm stressed out. No idea. I won't know till today. It's kind of a stressful day. I'm a little nervous. Very nervous. Figure out if you're going to be sentenced or if we take a deal. We'll see. Hopefully, everything will be okay. They're going to call your name. Hold on. Shaylee's been in and out of jail due to her drug addiction that started when her baby was taken and given to her aunt and uncle. Morning, ladies. Your name come on out. I don't know who her father is uh, due to the fact of being forced into prostitution. Um, but I think sometimes maybe it's better <laughs> that I don't know who her dad is. She doesn't know I'm her mother. She's six now. Charlie, come on out. We're really just waiting for the right time to tell her that I'm her mommy. Hopefully she's putting it together herself. I always have that hope that maybe she like figures it out. A few hours later, Shaylee's back from court with good news. She just earned her certificate for a one day chapter. She's being released. I have 13 months clean and sober, um, and hopefully this will be my last time in jail. Shaylee's focus is building a relationship with her daughter. <laughs> I'm excited, nervous, scared. I think me having the amount of time clean that I have, it definitely allows my aunt and uncle that have custody of her to trust me a little bit more, being around and coming whenever I want to if I call and you know, doing different things that I can do to be around her and just start building my relationship with her. Can't I just put like two one eighth would be like what's the equivalent to one eighth? Anybody know? Two, two one fourth cups, right? Flour. How much flour? All that? No, four cups. Okay. Right. In THU, Naila and friend Jen are attending a culinary class with Chef Craig. We've got a really lovely fresh green salad starting, and we'll have grilled cheese, grilled ham and cheese, all with our own homemade bread. And for dessert, we've got some wonderful butter cookies. And then into a football shape. <laughs> Smooth balls. Yeah. The culinary program is designed to help the inmates gain skills they can use on the outside. I know it's given a lot of job opportunities. Like, one of the number one industries that does not discriminate against felons is food service. So if you can, sh if you can stand out as a chef, they will never look at your criminal record. 
No, these are the Italian bread. Italian bread we're going to use to make the sandwich. Jen has been in jail for nearly three months after being arrested for grand theft. I'm doing eight months total. I'm pretty much spending my whole year in jail, but that's all right. I'm planning, I don't plan on coming back. You think it'll fit in here? It'll fit in here, huh? And since I'm not going to be using any more, I'll have a good chance with that. I mean, uh, well, I grew up in Daly City, California. I got my father got sick with ALS when I was 11, and so, um, and he died when I was about 15. So I, that's when I started using crack and smoking that with my boyfriend, who was like 11 years older than me. And so once I started doing that, I like was panhandling, and then I got into prostitution. I ran away from home. I was really young. I was so living in the Tenderloin because Tenderloin is like a really bad area, but yeah, it's like infested with drugs. I lived there from the time I was 15 to, ni or to 19. And so I used to get beat up all the time and all types of crazy stuff. I had been kidnapped, I got raped. When I was um, in San Francisco, like guys will like, you go in their hotel room and then they don't let you out. They just try to keep you. And then so I would try to fight to get out and they would like be pulling my legs, I'm grabbing the door and stuff, and they trying to, you know, not let you go because they want to keep you, and so that's pretty scary. I don't have emotions about it. Like I don't really cry a lot. I've, I don't, I don't think I've really cried the whole time I've been here. Excuse me. Uh huh. <laughs> Luckily, Jim managed to get out of the area. When I got pregnant with my son, I moved out to Fresno and then I got sober. So that's when my life changed. My son, having my son changed my life for the better because I could have been dead because there's so many bad things that happen out there. I'm just glad that I was able to stop using then. But unfortunately, her sobriety didn't last. So when I started using meth, I kind of lost it all again. And I just kind of just lost everything and just kind of lost hope for a while. And then so now since I'm in jail, it kind of helps me get a new grip on life. I have to get my, get my children back and whatnot. So it's a good inspiration. And they're all looking forward to getting their mom back. So that'll be nice. This good start. <laughs> Would you like one of everything as well? OK. Um, we have a, a blueberry ice smoothie and a lemonade blueberry. A blueberry lemonade. I'll be right back. Oh my God, this is making my pants fall down. Ay, ay, ay. There's no drawstring on this thing. And I've lost weight because I don't eat in here, so hopefully nobody will see my ass today. Jesus Christ. After coming back to jail, Linda has to go to court to face her new charges. I am going to court, and then I'm getting released, and then I'm going to acquire everything I need for my uh, deep fried pork chop meal that we've already discussed, um, complete with uh, french fries and champagne, mimosas, and beer, and coffee for the morning. She's feeling very confident about getting out. I mean, I didn't shoot the Pope. I stole some shit from Walgreens. You know what I mean? So I should be going home today. There is no alternative. I'm getting out and that's it. That's it. That's no alternative. I'm going home. That's it. This time, Linda's charge is more serious. She's got a felony instead of a misdemeanor. The reason it's a felony is because it's over $950 worth of merchandise. Linda's felony charge could mean more time in jail. So they're going to probably drop the charge from a felony to a misdemeanor, and I'll probably take another shoplifting charge, an extension on my probation, and go home. OK, it's time. All right, that's it. The boss has spoken. I am out of 5,000. Hello. Hello. Damn, you're serious. Linda's already thinking about what she'll do if she gets out. Are you, are you getting out today, bro? I'm getting out today. 
Welcome to Brock. <laughs> hey, you know what, though? I'm going to smoke me the fattest rock. Oh, my God. But although she's feeling confident, there's no guarantee she'll be released. I feel good, too. Great. Ladies, sure did. All right. Oh, it's the van. I thought we had the tour bus. My Uber is here. Where's my driver? Watch your head. Oh, shit. Watch your head, watch your head. Come on in, ladies. Watch your head, please. Oh, I hate this fucking right. There we go. We, we, we're very close. <laughs> Go ahead and pack all your stuff, all your belongings in your bin and stand by the door when you're ready to leave. Lila, everything's on the end of my bed. It's 6.30 a.m. and the bus is here to transfer Shaylee out of the jail. I'm definitely ready to go. I'm going to miss my friends, or well, friend, but I'm definitely excited. Her sights are set on a positive future. I'd like to counsel people with the same issues as me. Well, I have a lot of good advice, and I hope my story definitely saves somebody one day, so I would like to share that with as many people as I can. I'll be home by this weekend. I'm pretty excited. Ready to go home and stay home. I'm coming back here. Yeah, I'm done. I got a little girl that's growing up, and I want to break the cycle. I don't want my kid to ever have to go through this, so hopefully <laughs> I got it down packed this time. <laughs> so what did you think about the, uh, the pineapple guava? Oh, Smack it. In THU, Naila and Jenna are attending a class called Planting for Justice. So we started the Maple Street Food Forest about three weeks ago. And look, stuff's already growing. It's already, we already got blueberries, we got greens, we have chard, we have mangoes. It's exciting. These have lines in them already. That's got a line? Yep, that one, that one. That one. What about this one? The women have been planting a garden within the, the grounds of the jail. Thank I gotta you. get a blue one. I need a blue one. <laughs> As it's outside of the jail walls, only medium security inmates from the THU can attend. Tell me what is this called? The what? The this what are we doing right spaghetti now? Line. Oh, spaghetti line. Spaghetti line. Spaghetti line, and this is the drip. The drip. Drip and spaghetti line. All right, I need two sticks. Today we're setting up spaghetti lines, which supply water and irrigation to the different. Uh, plants and trees that we we planted in the food forest, and we're gonna and we're gonna water the uh, California oh, poppy mm -hmm. and one here. Here, okay. Naila is well, reaching the end okay. of her right sentence. Right. I can't wait to leave. I have a plan. I know what I'm gonna do when I get out. I know where I'm gonna go. I know where I'm gonna work. Take. Let me get you a blue. She's received a job offer from Planting for Justice. So Planning for Justice is helping me start a new life when I get out. They're, they have offered me a position on their farm in Oakland. You see the plant right in front of you? Yeah. The little white ones right here? Mm -hmm. that's, that's where you want to put a line at. Um, having a job when I leave, it means stability to me. It means having a plan and uh, a money source. Oh. Where, we at, where we at right... OK, perfect. It kind of helps with that unknown, and I think it gives them more peace of mind knowing that they have a job that they can continue to uh, survive on their own and help provide for their children and family. Great job. Hey. Make the dream work. Make the dream work. Yes, sir. You gotta tell something. Planting for Justice regularly employs ex-offenders to help them get back into work. It'll be good for me to work around people who can relate to my experiences and what I've been through and, you know, they came into jail with me and met me in jail. So, like, you can only get better out of jail, right? We need one more. Let me see if somebody can see it. Where? Naila hopes that having a job will help her reconnect with her family. 
it's helping my family to want to like support me and um, help me to get back on my feet because they see me helping myself and doing something with my life. You know what you're doing. Sometimes you have to go through certain stuff to understand what you don't need to do, like what to say no to, or it's just really not worth it. Like, I definitely needed to get things to get put in perspective. It's, it's time to slow down, live the simple life. Here you go. It's time for me to focus on my kid right now, like, and truly put my son first. Thank y'all. Yeah. When I called yesterday, he said, he's like, you have the wrong number. He was like, don't come home unless you have mocha. <laughs> In Valley, Linda is back from court, and unfortunately, she didn't get released. I'm not going home, and that's life. I'm not taking a felony, uh-uh. For shoplifting, and it's only $100 above the felony mark? That's crazy. I might be here for a minute, <laughs> so. Being in jail longer than she had planned has given Linda a chance to think about her future. You guys obviously know who Eric Clapton is, right? OK, Eric Clapton has a rehab healing center in Antigua. And it is my get off drugs dream. People need to heal from shit. Like, when they say trauma therapy, like, in my 20s, I lost my father, my brother, my first love, all to suicide. So I've been within, like, six years of each other. So, like, I've had a broken heart for a long time, you know? So, these are things that people don't just... People don't just do drugs just to be doing drugs. My dad and me had a very special relationship. Basically, I was kind of like my dad's hero. Um, my dad always made me feel more special than anyone in the world. Um, I'll probably get choked up just talking about it because I'm still very affected by his suicide. My dad killed himself three weeks after I turned 21. Yeah, it wasn't always easy, but I'm a lot like him. I, he had problems with alcohol, I had problems with drugs. You know? It's affected me my whole life. Look, I'm still crying over it. After reflecting on losing her dad, Linda is keen to reconnect with her daughter. Last night, I wrote a letter to my daughter, um, and I told her, you know, I'm here for you. I know you're upset. I know you're upset that I missed you on your birthday, and I'm so sorry. I, I want to work on us. I want us to go out to dinner. You know, I'd like to take you out to dinner when you feel up to it, you know, and, and start a foundation for repairing our relationship, you know? I should have done a lot more work on myself before I had a kid. I think she would have reaped more benefits from that. But when my kid, when I knew I was having a kid, I wasn't planned and I just, I knew I wasn't ready to be a mom, but I also knew I wasn't ready to let her go. So I did the best I could, you know. If my daughter and my mom were willing to have dinner with me when I got out of jail, that would be the biggest catalyst for me to not fuck up anymore. I think I'll be able to break the cycle. I just, I can't put a timetable on it, but I'm, I'm really determined to do the best that I can. And, you know, once, once I can figure this thing out, I just, it's gonna take time, but you know, I know I can break the cycle. That's, that's, that's no question on that one.